Oh, they're just <laughs> falling apart. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. I'm 100% okay with that. Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> 100%. At ATK, some of our most frequently used cookware are Dutch ovens and skillets. But when you combine the two, you get brazers. Here with me today is our brazing expert and my teammate, Ridley. I am so happy to be here, Lisa. Like you said, a brazer is like a cross between a Dutch oven and a skillet. And they're really cool because not only can they braise, but they can sear, simmer, and roast. Yeah, and we're going to take a look at all those functions and we're going to compare our winning and best buy brazer to Dutch ovens and skillets. First off, braising. Traditionally, braising is a wet heat cooking method used to turn tough cuts of meat tender. So meat is seared and browned first and then liquid is added and it's finished cooking low and slow either on the stove top or in the oven. At ATK, we've always braised in a Dutch oven. This is our winner by Le Creuset. It's seven and a quarter quarts and it's enameled cast iron. Our winning brazier, also by Le Creuset, this is three and a half quarts. Let's talk about how they differ. Well, as you can probably see, the Dutch oven is quite a bit larger. It has really high sides, a large capacity, which means it's perfect for accommodating really large cuts of meat and vegetables even. But a brazier is also great because while its walls are smaller, it has a really large cooking surface. Yeah. So it can kind of accommodate a lot of browning here. And it's spread out more a little. I mean, right. when you look at end to end here versus here, this is lower and wider than your Dutch oven. So you're really gonna get more surface area exactly. exposure, which helps things evaporate and concentrate the flavor. So let's see these brazers in action. We can start making our pork, lemon, and fennel ragu, which is something that you used in testing, right? Yeah, this recipe really has all the components that I wanted to test out in the brazier. It's browning, it's simmering, it goes in the oven for a while. So mm -hmm. it was ideal for this testing. We'll put in our yeah, water. Yeah, put it right in there. This is some chopped pancetta. We're just gonna let this go until the water evaporates and the fat and the pancetta starts to render out and it gets all brown and crispy. Mm -hmm. So we did test five brazers and the Le Creuset ended up being our favorite for a variety of reasons, including the fact it has really large looped handles, which make it easy to lift in and out of the oven and maneuver around the stove top. It has a light colored cast iron enameled interior, which is great for monitoring browning. I think we're ready for the fennel and onion. Okay, here's the onions. We're just gonna build flavor for this amazing sauce with the pancetta, which made some beautiful brown fond. And now we're adding our aromatic vegetables and they're gonna contribute their flavors. One of the other ones that you tested is the Staub. We really liked this pan, but one of the things that we had a problem with is that this interior is jet black and um, you know you can't see the, the contrast of, of browning and we really like to monitor exactly how brown it's going to get because that really is going to determine your flavor. So this one by Traumatina, yeah. this is your best buy, right? That is, that is my best buy and it worked wonderfully. It cooked pretty similarly to the Le Creuset. It's slightly bigger. It's four quarts instead of three and a half quarts. The chief difference between these two was the handles. Here you can see that they're, they're much smaller. They're not large and looped and they're just not as comfortable as Le Creuset, but at a fraction of the price, it's still a fantastic pan. What about this one, the Emile Henri? So this was the one ceramic brazier we tested. The rest of the models that we tested were made from enameled cast iron. And we had some problems with it from the get-go. We know that ceramic is not as good of a heat retainer and it doesn't distribute heat as evenly as enameled cast iron. And that really showed in our testing. So definitely a no for ceramic brazers. Yeah. And I think we're ready for the next step. Okay, so we're gonna add some garlic. Now salt, salt and pepper, thyme. Yes, and now we're ready for the second part of the braise. We have our water and some mm. heavy cream. Now we add the meat. This is just pork butt. And it does not have to be submerged. This is actually a key right. part. It just sits partway in the liquid. This part is gonna be exposed to the oven's heat. The liquid will just you know, keep that heat nice and moist. And this will get more and more tender. We're gonna bring it back to a boil. 
on the surface here, and then we're gonna transfer it to the oven, and it'll cook for about an hour and a half. That pork is gonna be brown and tender. Are you ready for this? Yes. Wow, Ooh. that is gorgeous. It smells great. It looks great. There's a ton of browning happening here. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's hard to pick them up. They're so tender. This is perfect, look at that. Beautiful, moist, falling apart, flavorful, and the right. sauce is gonna be amazing. So we've made this delicious pork, fennel, and lemon ragu in the brazier. Mm -hmm. This thing performed beautifully. Same as it does in a Dutch oven. But there are some things that you can't do in this that you can do in a Dutch oven and vice versa. For a roast this size, a brazier works perfectly, but it can't replace a Dutch oven for doing a larger roast, especially if you throw vegetables into the mix, like a pot roast. It's just not big enough. But for smaller roasts, things that accommodate about four people, a brazier works perfectly. So now we've compared brazers to Dutch ovens. Let's look at the other side. How do they compare to skillets? So we are going to be shallow frying some chicken cutlets in our brazier. The difference between shallow frying and deep frying is obviously the oil is shallow. Uh, it's something we'd normally do in a skillet. It's nice to have that access to the ingredients. You would never deep fry in a brazier. The oil would just completely overflow. Wow, gorgeous golden brown. The cast iron brazier is really great, just like a cast iron skillet in the sense that the heavy cast iron is gonna maintain the heat. When you add food to hot oil, it cools down the oil and you're not gonna get that beautiful crispness that you want. Yeah, and when you have a little bit of leftover oil at the end, I love that it has two handles because it just makes it so easy to just pour it into a little bowl and drain it out versus mm -hmm. having to kind of like struggle with a, you know, a one-handled skillet and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we shallow fried our breaded chicken cutlets in our winner, the Le Creuset. Beautiful, just as good as a skillet. We're gonna steam 14 cups of kale in our brazier. This is something that, you know, you might wanna do in a skillet, but skillets, you can get covers for them, but are usually open vessels. This has really got a lid. It will hold down all that kale. So we've brought the broth and the oil to a boil. We're gonna add this kale and these raisins and we're gonna suppress it with the lid until it collapses down. Because the brazier sides are less sloped outward and they're more straight up and they're also a bit higher, for something that has a large amount like this steamed kale recipe, the brazier is actually a better choice and a skillet. Okay, oh my goodness, that smells amazing, looks good. And now we take it off the heat and we're gonna add lemon juice Perfect. for a little you can. lovely Dip fresh in. acidity and some beautiful slivered almonds that we toasted. Amazing. We are ready to go to the table. Work just as well as a skillet. Yeah. So let's try one more thing in brazers. We're gonna roast a whole chicken. Wow, look at that. It looks gorgeous. It's perfect. This is our recipe for weeknight roast chicken. It's, it's super easy. You just preheat the pan, drop this chicken in, and that gets the dark meat cooking at the same rate as the light meat. And it's done right. so fast. It's like an hour. And then it's also pretty beautiful. So that means I can put it right on the table after it's cooled down a bit, of course. Mm -hmm. And I have less dishes to do, which is a win-win for me on a weeknight. Yep. I probably use my brazier like five out of seven days of the week, and I don't just braise in it, I do a lot of roast chicken. And it works great because the low sides leave ample room for browning around the bird, and I get a perfect one every time. Mm -hmm. We did really like brazers. We found them to be versatile in their own right, almost like a Swiss army knife of cookware. A brazier won't totally replace a Dutch oven or a skillet, but we do think it makes a worthy addition to your cookware roster. For more information on our winning brazier, our Best Buy brazier, and all the brazers we tested, check out the links below. Don't forget to leave your brazier questions in the comments and hit that subscribe button.